Support for this podcast and the following message come from Money Mind from Prudential, a podcast powered by your financial behavior. Hear insights from financial psychologists, experts, and more. Download and subscribe to Money Mind wherever you find podcasts and learn more at slate.com slash money mind. Hey, here's a great way to listen to Ask Me Another, NPR One. It is an app for your phone, kind of like Pandora, but for public radio. And it's full of news and podcasts, including Ask Me Another. So when you're ready to listen, NPR One has something great just for you. Find it on your app store, NPR One. From NPR and WNYC, live from the Bell House in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, it's NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia, Ask Me Another. Here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. You know our VIP from your childhood, starring in one of the longest-running kid shows of all time, a show that started with a question that never got answered. Can you tell me how to get... how to get to Sesame Street? And we still don't know! Kids have been asking this question every day for decades, and they have been completely ignored. Well, let me tell you something that ends right now, because we've got the woman on our show who can tell us, and we're going to get it out of her once and for all. You know her as Maria from Sesame Street. Our VIP is Sonia Manzano. Let's welcome our first two contestants to the stage for a game called Use the Force, Steve Rewinski and Dan Rodriguez. Steve, you work for the electric company. Uh, One of them, yes. (laughs) I keep the lights on, yes. You keep the lights on? Yes, you're welcome. Did you watch uh, the electric company growing up, by the way? No. No? No, I did not. Whoa, people are, yeah. (laughs) I, uh... I think I'm too young. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I can't believe you made two crucial mistakes in a row. (laughs) Bring it on. Okay. Dan works in financial crime software. What kind of criminals are we targeting in this case? Uh, You know, your mobsters, your terrorists. Okay, so not the uh, financial industry. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no. We're going to be talking a lot about puppets and muppets in this show, and we're going to start with one that is 900 years old. That's right. We're going to be talking about Yoda. So in this game, we want you to use the force and complete his famous phrase, do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> but with a good Yoda voice. <laughs> that was, uh, was an eerie impression. Yeah, I felt was... like, <laughs> like Yoda was in the room with us. Like uh, Yoda's younger sister's friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and all of your answers are going to rhyme with try. So let's go to our house musician, Jonathan Colton, Star Wars impressionist extraordinaire. Oh, geez. High expectations. <laughs> if we said, I'm out of a specific type of whiskey, drink or drink not, you would reply, there is no rye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So remember, all the answers are going to rhyme with try, uh, and the winner will move on to our final round at the end of the show. However your Yoda impression works out is fine, but give it a shot. (laughs) These miniature trees from Japan are not here. Prune or prune not? Steve. There is no bonsai. But where's my Yoda? (laughs) There are no bonsai? No, no, you said it. No, you said it. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. Is that a grammar That's thing? Right. Yoda is a famous grammar stickler. <laughs> no, you answered correctly. I just wanted Thank your you. Yoda impression. No, there, it, there is no bonsai. There we go. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> the educator and television host who is nicknamed the science guy has retired. Experiment or experiment not? Dan. 
There is no Bill Nye. Correct. And if you're just tuning in now, don't worry. Don't freak out. Bill Nye is fine. <laughs> These books about Southern California identical twins Jessica and Elizabeth Wakefield have disappeared. Read or read not? Yeah, very unlikely. <laughs> very unlikely. Mm -hmm. I got nothing. Let's go to our puzzle guru, Art Chung. Maybe he has a hint that can lead you down the path. Uh, these books were named after the school that these characters attended. Dan. There is no teenager eye. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that all teenagers go to teenager high. Steve, you have an answer? Uh, there is no Sweet Valley High. Yeah! Now you admit you read them. <laughs> this Australian soft rock duo from the 80s is all out of love. Sing or sing not? Dan. There is no air supply. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this independent sultanate on the coast of Borneo has been wiped off the map. Visit or visit not? Dan. There is no Brunei. <laughs> Inquisitive Yoda, you are correct. <laughs> We've run out of the Indian black tea with fancy spices. Sip or sip not? Dan. There is no chai. Yeah, you're going to start a riot at Starbucks, but you're correct. Chai latte is not a real thing. Wait a second, wait a second. Chai latte is not a real thing? Yeah, my wife is Indian. She's going to... She's going to set you straight here. Yeah. Chai is chai. Chai is chai. Chai is just tea. Yeah. Yeah. Chai latte. What is that? Marketing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one knows the rules for this ball game played with a cesta on a three-walled court. Play or play not. Steve. There is no high lie. <laughs> Correct. This is your last clue. I do not recognize this federal holiday on which both John Adams and Thomas Jefferson passed away. Celebrate or celebrate not. Steve. There is no 4th of July. That is correct. I think it's a weird coincidence that everyone that signed that uh, Declaration of Independence is dead. <laughs> Let's go to our puzzle guru, Art Chung. We have a tie, Ophira. What? <laughs> Hands on your buzzers. I cannot bake this tart dessert associated with Florida. Eat or eat not. Dan. There is no key lime pie. Key lime pie. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. You're our winner. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome our next contestants, Adam Eisman and Mar Ehrenberg. <laughs> what is your ideal first date activity, Mar? <laughs> That's a tough question. Um, I think I've been on a lot of bad first dates. Yeah. So I definitely know the answer to that, what I don't like. Uh, probably something that I can't get anyone else to do with me, things like go see a punk rock show huh? and then maybe a midnight showing of Point Break. That would be perfect. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We've got to admit. Adam, how about you? First date activity, ideal. Uh, just drinks, maybe some live music, something that both parties can easily get out of uh, quickly. <laughs> Adam's an optimist. <laughs> I like Mar. That's like something I could do with someone that is totally unique. And Adam's like, escape plan? <laughs> Something that has an escape plan. <laughs> Got it. Now, you've heard of dinner and a movie. Well, this game is about dinner in a movie. We'll describe some famous meals in movies, and you have to tell us the name of the movie. Puzzle Guru Archung, how about an example? Precocious children who look like adults will have kernels and kernels of fun with our crudite platter as they bite into our succulent baby corn typewriter style. That's from the Tom Hanks film, Big. So remember, we're looking for the film and not the dish. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so you would not say baby corn. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. 
You'll sing and dance while begging, Please, sir, I want some more, when a scoopful of our porridge hits your well-worn wooden bowl. Mar. Oliver? That's Oliver, right. that's right. <laughs> Oliver exclamation point, technically. <laughs> It was right, but you did answer Oliver, question mark. <laughs> That's right. It's a different punctuation. <laughs> <laughs> Minnie's vengeful chocolate pie brings up the rear of the meal with a recipe going back to the civil rights era. The secret ingredient will change the way you look at and smell dessert forever. Mar. The help? The help is correct. Revisit the carefree days of college cafeteria food fights with our creamy mashed potatoes served straight from a Delta frat boy's mouth. Adam. Animal House. Oh, yeah. You got it. <laughs> Only want toast? Even if it's not on the menu, our waitresses will never say no. They'll hold the butter, lettuce, mayonnaise, and even the chicken between their knees. I have a hint. It might not help, but here we go. It's a 1970 drama featuring Jack Nicholson as a oil rig worker who's also a piano prodigy. Mar, five easy pieces? Yeah. <laughs> I knew Jack Nicholson, and that was it. That was all I had. That's pretty good. So full, you're ready to explode? Well, you always have room for a wafer-thin dessert mint, and we'll have a cleanup crew standing by. Adam. The meaning of life? <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. This is your last clue. It will be an enchanted bella notte as you and your companions slurp up our spaghetti and meatballs for two, one long strand at a time. But be careful... You may find yourself kissing a dog. Mar. <laughs> Lady on the Tramp. That's right. <laughs> That's the movie that I learned the lady doesn't always also have to be the tramp. <laughs> That's right. It's another character. Boys can be tramps too. <laughs> That's right. Puzzle Guru Archung, how did our contestants do in that disgusting food game? They both did great, but congratulations, Mar. We'll see you in our final round at the end of the show. <laughs> Coming up, I'll talk to our VIP, Sonia Manzano, who is retiring from a 44-year stint on Sesame Street. And having worked with a vampire, a grouch, and many monsters, it has prepared her perfectly for her next career in politics. You're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. Support for Ask Me Another comes from LearnVest. LearnVest is an online financial advice company focused on empowering people nationwide to make smart decisions with their money. If you want to know how aggressively to pay down your student loans, LearnVest can help with that. If you want to know how much you should put aside for saving or contribute to your retirement account, Yep, they're on it. They'll create a customized financial plan. Plus, they'll pair you with a financial planner to help you keep on track. So to see a sample plan and get a $50 credit, go to learnvest.com slash another. Hey, thanks so much for listening to Ask Me Another. If you'd like more podcasts in your ear holes now, check out How to Do Everything. It's a survival guide for all of life's trials and tribulations, like bear attacks, romantic conundrums, and romantic bear attacks that turn out to be conundrums. There's a chance you'll find it helpful, and you'll definitely enjoy hearing about other people's problems. Find it now at npr.org slash podcasts and on the NPR One app. This is Ask Me Another from NPR and WNYC. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and please welcome our very important puzzler. You know her as Maria from Sesame Street, Sonia Manzano. All right, so I, I mentioned this off the top. I have to ask you, where is Sesame Street? Where is it? Sesame Street is everywhere. <laughs> 
I mean, it truly is. I have been to the Midwest in the middle of a farm field, and I've asked a little kid, where is Sesame Street? And they'll say, oh, it's just right there around the corner right now. But like Queens, the Bronx, Harlem... <laughs> Oh, Manhattan. you mean specifically? I thought you meant metaphorically. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, no. Uh, it's in Manhattan. I would say that it was in Harlem. The, there's a street sign, the 110th Street, and so I think that's. Oh yeah. All yeah. right. I... Good. I'm going. <laughs> now, when I told some people that you were uh, appearing on our show, they said, "When I see her, I might cry." which I'm told is not a uncommon response. I know. It's really an effect that I have on people, and I'm trying to, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to accept it, and I think that they see me, and all, I'm a catalyst, and all of a sudden they're thrown back onto their mother's milky laps at <laughs> 4 o'clock in the afternoon and watching letters and numbers, and I think that's what gets them right in the heart, and they, that's why they start to cry. Oh, whether they like their mother or not, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> they liked you. Uh, <laughs> do people come up and, and ask you if you know the count? Yeah, the, or little kids do, yeah. you know. Or, you know or, uh, but adults that I went to college with, with will say, see that, Maria? I, I knew her. And the kid will say, so I know her, too. <laughs> <laughs> what up? <laughs> Not impressed. <laughs> and you have a new memoir coming out where you write all about your life called Becoming Maria. Now, you were surrounded as a child with a lot of chaos and instability. Did you find solace in watching television? I sure did. This is the television of the 50s. It was Father Knows Best and Leave It to Beaver. And our life was like absolutely the opposite of Father Knows Best and Leave It to Beaver. And then when I got on Sesame Street, I thought, this is cool. There's kids watching me, and uh, I'm going to be for them what I needed to see. There's going to be calmness and beauty in a recognizable place for the children watching Sesame Street. So, but wait a second, you're 21 years old, you're studying drama at Carnegie Mellon, right? And you're in an off-Broadway production of Godspell. Yes. And then you get a call to audition for Sesame Street. Yeah. The most important things happen to you when you're not paying the least bit of attention because it was one of my first auditions and I went, oh, okay, you know, what the heck? I didn't know it was going to end up I was going to blink in 44 years we're going to go by. So it's changed so much over the years. Matter of fact, they re-released some early episodes a few years ago, and they came with a parent advisory warning. I will read it. These early Sesame Street episodes are intended for grown-ups <laughs> and may not suit the needs of today's preschool child. I know it was a disclaimer because Cookie Monster had a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> and after he watched Monsterpiece Theater, he would eat the pipe. <laughs> so, you know, you have to be very mindful that those four-year-olds out there do not eat that pipe that they're smoking. It, it was just darker. It was just darker. It was gritty. <laughs> It was a gritty place. <laughs> they cleaned it up. That's why I related to it so much. I thought, wow, that, what, that's my neighborhood on television. How cool is that? You know. So now that you're retiring from the show, how do they deal with your departure on Sesame Street? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, what really happened, and like, I'll tell you this, but don't tell anybody, okay? No problem. <laughs> What happened is that Luis and Maria had this terrible fight over why the toaster hadn't been fixed in 44 years. <laughs> so then Oscar heard about it and he asked Maria to move in with him. The thing is, he didn't ask her to marry him, just move in with him. So that's where things stand. <laughs> All right, so Sonia, we are going to subject you to your own Ask Me Another challenge later in the show. But right now, you have graciously agreed to help us out with a game about the street of sesame. So how about a hand for Sonia Manzano?
And let's bring out our lucky contestants, Patty and Tommy Marr. Hello. Now, this is mother and son. What is your favorite memory of watching Sesame Street with your kids? Mine was when Elmo had his rubber ducky in the tub because I would then, at the end of the meal and everything else, getting three kids ready to get ready for bed, start singing that song, and to make me shut up, they would get up and do what they were supposed to do. <laughs> Tommy, what's your favorite memory? I like the count. <laughs> <laughs> and how he'd always, like, count and then be so proud of himself and go, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I like just a broad memory like that. <laughs> he likes to count things. Yep, 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 yep. So this game is called I Met a Girl Named Maria. We are going to walk down memory lane with Sonia about the life of Maria, and the winner will move on to our final round. You ready? We're ready. All right, here's your first one. Maria was just a teenager from Puerto Rico when she arrived on Sesame Street. Her first job was working where? Was it A, the flower shop? B, the library, or C, Mr. Hooper's store? Tommy. Mr. Hooper's store. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tommy, that is incorrect. I'm sorry. That's okay, but you recognize Mr. Hooper's store. I bet and you got excited. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lending library where the site for the fix-it shop eventually uh, came to be. There was a lending library, and that was my first job with... And didn't your character work briefly as a construction worker? Yes. yes. That is kind of amazing. That's right. I was a construction worker when feminism was first in the air. This is the, when women were burning bras. That was a long time ago. And I still don't understand what... Th I had to get on the girder and go like this. I'm sorry. I forgot it's radio. <laughs> I'm waving my hand in the air. <laughs> And uh, that's what I had to do as Maria, but I never understood what that meant. <laughs> but they were like that. They, yeah, yeah, I did it anyway. Okay, very good. <laughs> All right. In 1988, Maria and Louise finally get married. Bob was the best man, and Oscar-winning actor Jose Freira played Louise's uncle. Which Sesame Street Muppet served as the ring bearer? Tommy. Big Bird. <laughs> Big Bird was a very good guess, Tommy. It was Elmo. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. And he sang, Don't drop the wing, Elmo. Don't drop the wing. <laughs> it is fascinating that on the show, uh, your life, as you move through your life, the show also let Maria move through her life, like getting married, having a kid, aging publicly on television. That, is, that yeah. was groundbreaking. That's right. That's right. Other kids' shows, if you were an ingenue, you had to remain an ingenue, and then you'd get fired when you stopped being an ingenue. But not on Sesame Street. We just age as much as we want to, <laughs> or not want to. <laughs> Did you go to the producers and say, listen, I'm having a kid. What are you going to do about it? No, actually, it was their idea. I, I really... <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute. <laughs> no, wait a minute. I didn't mean it like that. But I actually fell in love, and I actually said I was going to get married, and they said, well, this might be a good opportunity to show kids real love and real relationships and uh, amongst people, real people that yeah. are just like everybody else in America. And that's why I got married on the show right after I got married in real life. Maria Louise and their daughter Gabby live at 123 Sesame Street. Gordon, Susan, and their son Miles are on the ground floor and Oscar lives in the trash can outside. But who lives in the basement? Patty. Bert and Ernie. That is correct. Bingo. <laughs> 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 
Patty, did you just know that? I do. <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea, and I was the guru. <laughs> yeah. Puzzle Guru Archung, how did our contestants do? Looks like Patty paid a little more attention watching TV because she is our winner. <laughs> Congratulations. And thank you again to Sonia Manzano. Thank you. We will be subjecting you to a challenge a little later in the show, so get ready. Okay, I will. All right. Thank you. Do you want to be a contestant on Ask Me Another? Well, guess what? It's as easy as ABC or 123. All you have to do is sign up at amatickets.org. We will send you a quiz and see if you got what it takes to visit Elmo's World of Trivia. For a game titled Turning Swords into Words, let's welcome our next two contestants, Jessica Callahan and Michael Bergen. <laughs> Jessica, you make jewelry for fun, for friends for and fun, family. Yeah. What's your, what are you making it out of? Uh, just glass beads, little beads that my husband doesn't like to vacuum off the floor when I spill them. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> any, uh, any weird things you've ever made jewelry out of? Um, used key, uh, keyboard keys from oh. laptops and computers. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how did that go over with friends and family? Where they're like, I'm psyched. As long as they spell out things nicely, then they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, Michael plays poker for fun, but during college... You made a little extra spending money playing poker online? Yeah, I obviously, like most students, didn't have much money and uh, would play little tournaments to, you know, have a nice meal out somewhere. Not a lot of money, but a little bit of money. Still, you won. Over the long haul, yes. Have you ever thought maybe I'll go to Vegas and try a, a real tournament out there? You know, in fact, I just had a very humbling weekend in Atlantic City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't think so. <laughs> okay, very good. So how do you turn a sword into a word? You cut off its head. Right, Puzzle Guru Archung? <laughs> what kind well, of wordplay is this? So when you take a word and you remove its first letter, leaving you with another word, puzzlers call that a beheadment, taking its head off. So in this game, we'll give you a clue to a two-word phrase featuring a word and its beheadment, and you have to tell us that phrase. So if we said, it's a very smart rod or handle used to operate a machine, that's a clever lever. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that the first word in the phrase will be the longer word, and then when you take off the first letter, you get the second word. And the two words will not always rhyme. Perfect. Aww. I'm just telling you all the, <laughs> all the, all the facts. Yeah. You ready? Okay. It's a special edition of Time Magazine... Made entirely of Kleenex. Jessica. The tissue issue. That's right. <laughs> it's the physical discomfort you get when visiting the country next to Portugal. Michael. Spain pain. Ouch. That is correct. <laughs> Worst kind of pain. To levitate above like a drone or a helicopter. Jessica. Hover over? Yeah, right there with that. People are dazzled. It's the wood used by the guy who fixes your leaky faucet. Michael. Uh, plumber lumber? Yes, that's right. I think it's very nice that everyone took that question at face value. You had some, you had some issues. You had some issues with that. It's the wood. <laughs> Used by the guy who fixes your leak of faucet. I think I know what you mean. It's called a premise. That's right. <laughs> It's when you feel sad or remorseful about buying that white bird with long legs that lives near water. You know that feeling. 
I don't blame you for not knowing the answer. <laughs> no, no, no ideas? Any hints, Archung? I don't know. I try not to be remorseful about anything. It's true, he does. That's not a hint. That's yeah, just what a was true that? fact. <laughs> I'm, True fact about our I'm just trying to give them the long word. <laughs> uh, yeah, remorse. Uh, no, no. All right. Oh, oh, Michael. Regret, egret. Yeah. yeah. Wow. As they say in poker, nice pull. <laughs> Hit it on the river. On the river. That's right. <laughs> It's a shorter way of saying, which one of you owns these stockings? <laughs> Jessica. Whose hose? Whose hose <laughs> is correct. Also a improv show on the Gardening Network. <laughs> As the kids might say, it's really excellent headwear. <laughs> Jessica. That's a fat hat. It sure is. <laughs> well done. I gotta say, these are hard. You guys are doing a fantastic job. This is your last clue. There are two playful water mammals from the weasel family, and this is the sexier one. <laughs> Michael. The Hotter Otter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Art Chung, how did our contestants do? Uh, it's a tie. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. Why did the flat cooking surface cross the road is an example of this type of brain teaser. <laughs> Jessica. A griddle riddle. Congratulations, Jessica. You're moving on to the final round. <laughs> Coming up, we'll pit Sonia Manzano against her longtime Sesame Street partner in a game about the residents in their neighborhood. So don't go anywhere. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and this is Ask Me Another, brought to you by the letters NPR. <laughs> A quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Casper. They are an online retailer for mattresses, and Casper mattresses are American made and obsessively engineered for comfort. They use two technologies, latex foam and memory foam, to give just the right amount of sink and bounce. And they have a risk free trial. You can try out your Casper mattress for 100 days with free delivery and returns. It's outrageous comfort at a polite price. So go to casper.com slash another to check out their options. And they have a special offer for listeners of this podcast. Use the promo code another to redeem $50 towards a Casper mattress that works for you. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back to Ask Me Another, NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and with me is our house musician, Jonathan Colton, and our puzzle guru, Art Chung. We will have Sesame Street's Maria and Louise out here in just a sec. But first, our next game is called TV on the Radio, and here to play it are Tyler Patla and Melissa Ahmed. Tyler, you are a big traveler. You've been to how many continents? I've been to six. And you're working on the seven? I'm working on Antarctica. I hope to go on my honeymoon next oh. year. Is there... <laughs> Is your fiancé good with this plan? Oh, yeah. She's on board. Okay, good, good. <laughs> um, Melissa, you just graduated from Columbia. Congratulations. <laughs> If your life was a TV show, what would it be called? Uh, I think I would call it The Mindy Project. <laughs> <laughs> would that run at the same time as the other Mindy Project? Um, well, she's already basically living my life with my face, so, you know. 
Okay, that's good to know. I like that response. <laughs> Just take a show that already exists and you're like, that is my entire life yeah. and my face. Yeah. I want it back. I want it back. Well, you guys get to play a music game. Lucky, so I'm going to hand it over to our house musician, Jonathan Colton. Thank you, Ophira. In this game, I will be playing songs whose titles happen to contain the name of a TV show, but we've changed the lyrics to be about that show. All you have to do is identify the name of the show. Very easy. <laughs> we will move on to the final round. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Watch out. You might get sarcoidosis or lupus. Could be your diagnosis. He's not your ordinary doc. Because his name is Tyler. House. House is correct. <laughs> now that we've voted you off, life's so much better. Thought the tribe alliance would break, but it's stronger. You thought I couldn't eat those bugs, but I'm chewing. You thought I wouldn't last the season. I won millions. I am a... Tyler? Survivor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he sings it even. Nice. J.D. is a guy scraping by. Also known as an intern. Always dreaming while he's doing rounds. Or just sits on Turk's old couch. So no, don't want no voiceovers. No, I don't want a season nine. And no, don't hang up that x-ray. No, not for the millionth time. Melissa. Scrubs. Scrubs is correct. <laughs> We don't want any of those. <laughs> no. No, thank you. No. No, thank you, Scrubs. <laughs> I was working in a field tent late one night when Colonel Henry Blake appeared in sight. From beyond Korean hills, the copters rise with Hawkeye and Trapper, our surgeon guys. Tyler. Mash. Mash, yeah. A sex-crazed guy from New York Tries to ride with much frustration He loves his drugs and booze And the West Coast full of temptation A show that's set in Hollywood called Melissa Californication yeah. Yeah. Art Chung, how did our contestants do? Tyler, congratulations, you're moving on to our final round. It's time to play a game with our very important puzzler. Let's bring back Sonia Manzano and our very special guest, Emilio Delgado. Hola! Uh, <laughs> Miller, it's so nice of you to join us. Ah, gracias. Muchas gracias. <laughs> <laughs> so when people blur the lines of reality and the show and assume that you are married in real life, which I, I think happens all the time, right? It's been happening all along, I think. Yeah. yeah? Do you tell them the truth? What do you do? Got to tell them the truth. Well, I, like I said, <laughs> we told uh, a woman the truth once. Do you remember? We were... So, oh, yeah, somewhere, yeah. and a woman uh, says, I'm so happy that, to, that my kid had the opportunity to see real love on Sesame Street. And yeah. <laughs> she'll know what real love is when she grows up. Good acting. <laughs> and um, so we looked at each other, and we said, well, we should tell her the truth. And we did. We said, madam, we're not really married. And she went, oh, well, as long as you really love each other. <laughs> You know, true love, what can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> Emilio, what is your character, Louise, going to do on Sesame Street? Uh, you know, quite frankly, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? 
Uh, you know, the, the show is changing very fast. And, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen uh, with these characters. I mean, I know that uh, they turned the fix-it shop into, I don't know, what were we? We were a uh, laundromat. Laundromat. No, but it was a mail shop before that, you know. And then uh, I think in the last few years it became a bicycle shop. But I don't know if it's going to continue being that. Who knows? Uh, I think bikes, bikes are around for a while. I yeah, think yeah. Bikes. You they, know, you they know should what? make it a Verizon store. <laughs> <laughs> Verizon. That's it. Now, the game we are going to play with you is called These Are the Muppets in Your Neighborhood. Jonathan and I are going to give you a name and brief description of a Sesame Street Muppet, and you have to tell us, is it a real Muppet, or is it one that we made up? Because there's been lots of different ones all over the years. So we are going to alternate between the two of you. Uh, just tell us, is it real Muppet or fake Muppet? All right, Amelia, this one's for you. Yeah. Stinky, a stinkweed plant who is friendly but smelly. And blooms a flower out of his head on his birthday. Believe it or not, that's real. <laughs> that, is real that is a real Muppet. <laughs> yeah. I want to be clear, when we say real, <laughs> it's still a puppet. An actual puppet. Yeah. You're right, it's an actual puppet. Uh, what was that about? Stinky? Yeah. Uh, I think it had, was it part of... Uh, uh, Oscar's. I think it was thing? Oscar's yeah. plant. I think it was Oscar's uh, pet plant. I think yeah. that's what it was. So, and he had to be stinky, of course. Right. Yeah. If he was going to like any flower, it had to be. Yeah, that. It had to be the stink. stink. Yeah. Harvey Knee Slapper, a mustachioed practical joker who laughs at his own jokes, such as asking, "Do you want me to keep an eye on your hat?" and then smashing the hat with a giant letter I. <laughs> yes, Sonia. That is a real Muppet oh, cat. Yeah, yes. yeah. Clearly modeled after my older brother. <laughs> I he, hope not. This puppet had great big yellow teeth. Used to hang out with Guy Smiley. Oh, yeah? They were buds? <laughs> Remember <Boy>. him? <laughs> Guy Imagine the trouble they must have gotten up to together. <laughs> All right, Emilio, is this real or fake? Miles Millennial... A boy puppet who wants a prize for everything he does. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies to our younger yeah, listeners. Yeah. We need your support. Uh, actually, that's a good idea for a puppet. Yeah, but a no, it's not. No, it's fake. Puppet. It's totally yeah. fake. It's all for the joke. We've decided this is a little too easy, so let's make it more of a competition. Let's turn on your buzzers, and for these next ones, we'll see who rings in first. Real or fake? Professor Hastings, a professor whose lectures are so dull, he falls asleep during them. <laughs> Sonia. Fake. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> I know, it seems like a terrible lesson. <laughs> Not to mention dreary television. <laughs> dreary. The characters falling asleep. Meryl Sheep, an acting teacher and a sheep with an accent similar to Meryl Streep's in Sophie's Choice. <laughs> Amelia. Yes, she's real. That is real. Yes. <laughs> A little on the dark side, but real, <laughs> I yeah. Know, but real, yeah. No, I remember her. Oh, she was terrific. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Archung, how did our contestants do? I'm just amazed they can remember anything from 45 years ago. <laughs> yeah. But Emilio is our winner. Oh, Congratulations. Oh. And now we have a kind of an amazing treat. Sonia and Emilio will sing a very special Sesame Street song that Sonia wrote the lyrics to, accompanied by your very own Jonathan Colton. You ready? Ready. Do it. Here we go. Each time we meet at work or the street, we always say hello. But you say hola, and I say hola 
It's a word that we both know. All I mean is hi, hello, not goodbye. Why everywhere you go? The girls say hola. The boys say hola. Cause hola means hello. Latins from Alaska or from Spain or fair Nebraska will say hola when they mean hello. Latins from Havana or Detroit or all Montana know that's just how the old greeting goes. Latins from Queens and the hip Argentines say hola when greeting each other. We know the way we can all say hola what's happening brother. Take it from us and don't make a fuss. We want you in the know. Come on, everybody. So just say hola. Say hola. Say hola instead of hello. Oh my God, Sonia Manzano, Miller Delgado, thank you so much. Now we're going to crown this week's grand champion. Let's bring back Dan, Mar, Patty, Jessica, and Tyler to play our Ask Me One More Final Round. Our puzzle guru, Ar Chung, will lead this final round called It's All Relative. So this game has nothing to do with Einstein, but in this final round, every correct answer will be a word or phrase that contains a type of relative. So for example, if I said, in the United States, it's celebrated on the second Sunday in May, the answer is Mother's Day. We're going to play this spelling bee style, so one wrong answer and you're out. You only have a few seconds to give me that answer. The last person standing is our Ask Me Another grand winner. For your prize, you'll receive a grab bag of Sesame Street goodies and a copy of Sonia's memoir, Becoming Maria, in which she may or may not tell you how to get to Sesame Street. Here we go. Dan, this fictional character is the leader of a group of tiny blue creatures who live in the forest. Papa Smurf. That's right. Mar, this film starred Whoopi Goldberg as a singer who disguises herself as a nun. Sister Act. Sister Act is correct. (laughs) Patty, this film by Ethan and Joel Cohen, loosely based on Homer's Odyssey, Star George Clooney as Ulysses Everett McGill. Shaking your head. I'm sorry. That's okay. Step aside. Jessica, do you know the answer? Oh, brother, where art thou? That's correct. Thank you, Patty, for playing. We're to Tyler. This Broadway musical, later made into a film, weaves a story around songs from the ABBA catalog. Mamma Mia. That's correct. Back to Dan. This slightly tart green variety of apple is popular in pies. Granny Smith. Granny Smith is correct. Well done. Mar, contrary to that rumor about Mikey from Life Cereal, you won't die if you mix this fizzy candy with some soda. Pop rocks. Well done. (laughs) Jessica, Dorothy lived with her in Kansas before being swept away to Oz. Three seconds. And... Nope, sorry, That's you're okay. out of time. Tyler. Auntie M. That's correct. We have to say goodbye to Jessica. Dan, released in 1979, it's one of the most popular, and some would say annoying, Christmas recordings of all time. Uh, mama, daddy. <laughs> uh, mama, mama, daddy, Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to have to give you three seconds on that. Do you, I don't think you have the answer. <laughs> Mar, do you know the answer? Grandma got run over by a reindeer. That's right. Sorry about that, Dan. <laughs> We're down to two players, Tyler and Mar. Tyler, the single by the band Train was the top-selling song on the U.S. iTunes site in 2010. Hey, Soul Sister. That's right. Mark, Katie Seagal won a Golden Globe in 2011 for playing the matriarch of a motorcycle gang on this FX series. Sons of Anarchy. You got it. 
Tyler, this Ira Levin novel tells the story of a woman who suspects that the eerily perfect homemakers in her Connecticut town are robots. The Stepford Wives? Nice pull. <laughs> Marr, Steve Martin and Diane Keaton play the parents in this 1991 remake of a 1950 Spencer Tracy film. Father of the Bride. That's right. <laughs> Tyler, this 1970s sitcom starred Red Fox and Damon Wilson as owners of a junkyard. I don't know. All right. Marv, you know the answer. You're our winner. <laughs> Sanford and Son. You got it. <laughs> That is our show. Thank you so much for playing. Check out our podcast on iTunes or Stitcher, and you can find us on Facebook or Twitter at NPR Ask Me Another. And come see us live or apply to be a contestant. Just go to amatickets.org. Ask Me Another's puzzle guru is Art Chung. Hey, my name anagrams to Narc Thug. Our house musician is Jonathan Colton. Now, Jolta Cannon. Additional puzzle writing by Eric Feinstein, Jess Miller, Greg Pliska, Mary Tobler, Christine Walters, and senior writer Karen Lurie. Ask Me Another is produced by Denny Shin, Lena Mazitsis, Mike Katzif, and Annabel Bacon, along with Anya Grunman. We are recorded by Damon Whittemore, Kristen Muller, and David Hurtkin. Our executive producer is Jesse Baker. Ask Me Another was created by by Eric Newsom. We'd like to thank our home in Brooklyn, New York, the Bell House. Hot Heel Blues. And our production partner, WNYC. I'm Her Ripe Begonias. Ophira Eisenberg. And this was Ask Me Another from NPR. Next time on Ask Me Another, Loudon Wainwright gives advice to those just discovering the music of his long and prolific career. Whatever. Yeah. Just start. Yeah. Come on, hurry up. Time is short. I could be dead in no time. Please discover me now. Time's a-wasting. Join me, Ophira Eisenberg, for NPR's Hour of Puzzles, where games